And for that, I want to apologize to the LGBT community. Let's give them a great big round of applause. For what? Some of my past words, comments, preaching has been received by the LGBT community as negative and hurtful. There is nothing more hurtful than to think, to imagine that you said something in the name of God and it hurts somebody. Now we're beginning to tell sinners we're sorry for offending you. But nobody gets saved without being offended. The gospel is an offense. I am here because the black church owes this community an apology. I wanted to come tonight uh, not just uh, as pastor of New Birth. I wanted to come for the pastors who have hurt you. I've gone around the world fighting for Trayvon Martin, for Freddie Gray, uh, for Michael Brown. Uh, and in my pulpit, I committed hate crimes. And I, I needed to come for the blood that drips off my hands. I'm not sure my sisters, that's how he said it. That's why I can't say it. she was preaching biblical truth, biblical truth. She was agreeing with God. Oh my, the devil came after her and uh, we got a chance to uh, talk with her and uh, just, uh, I, I was just honored to stand shoulder to shoulder with her doing that battle. I know what it's like, as you as you well know, I know what it's like to have to contend with these public battles and more often than not, have to stand alone. There is such a care to take when you realize you're not just preaching to the choir anymore. You're preaching to the ones who wanted to be in the choir and was too scared to come because they didn't understand our language. Musicians, the God-given ability to unite and to heal and to understand that some of my past words, comments, preaching has been received by the elder community as negative and hurtful. There is nothing more hurtful than to think, to imagine that you said something in the name of God and it hurts somebody. You know, we have a church lingo. We have a church jargon that everybody doesn't get. And sometimes you've got to say it for the people in the back. And for that, I want to apologize to the elder community. Let's give them a great big round of applause. We want them to have strength and to sincerely know that we must all do the work to embrace all of what God's people and show forth his love to everyone. Amen. And why is it that the church is constantly apologizing to Sodom and Gomorrah but you never hear them apologize to us? Kim Burrell said she hopes uh, to best use this moment to build a bridge while seeking peace with the LG community. Build a bridge? Why are we told in the Bible to build a bridge to sin? That's not a part of uh, the doctrine.
right here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, wherefore come you, come you out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And look at this, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. What is this build a bridge stuff? How do you seek peace with sin? The gospel is an offense. Have you ever heard of the offense of the cross? I tell you what, the day I got saved, I got offended. I couldn't believe the preacher was saying what he was saying. Couldn't believe he made me feel like I felt. The truth slapped me in my face. The truth jacked me up. I came face to face with the knowledge that I was on my way to hell. And it offended me. And it offended me all the way to the altar. And I got saved. How many remember the day the Lord saved you? Did, the, did not the truth make you uncomfortable? Bishop Patrick Bourdon responds to criticism with grace conviction and commitment to the biblical principles. When faced with opposition, he relies on the teachings of Jesus Christ and the word of God. Rather than being defensive, he seeks to engage in respectful dialogue, addressing concerns while remaining steadfast in his faith. His approach is characterized by love, humility, and a desire to lead others toward truth. When faced with disagreements within the church community, Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. seeks a resolution through biblical principles. He encourages open dialogue, active listening, and a spirit of unity. Rather than promoting division, he emphasizes love, forgiveness, and understanding. His leadership fosters a can environment where differing opinions can coexist while maintaining a focus on God's truth and the mission of the church. Bishop Patrick Wooden is a soul-stirring gospel preacher who fearlessly addresses moral and social issues of our time. He doesn't shy away from speaking biblical truth, even when it's unpopular are politically incorrect. With over 34 years as the pastor of Upper Room Church of God in Christ, he passionately fulfills his role as a watchman on the wall, ensuring that congregants remain informed and unswayed. Bishop Wooden's motto, I love you enough to tell you the truth. His unwavering commitment to God's truth make him a significant voice in the community, advocating, advo advocating for the violence. You can find him boldly and uncompromisingly and defending God's truth at events like the 105th Holy Convection. Recently, he expressed gratitude for the journey of 2023 while also acknowledging the world's seemingly downward trajectory, inviting everyone to prayer and the annual year and revival. Bishop Patrick L. Borden Sr. has fearlessly addressed a range of moral and social issues rooted in biblical teachings. Some of these includes sanctity of a life. He advocated for the sanctity of human life, opposing abortion and promoting adoption as a loving alternative, marriage and family. Bishop Wooden emphasizes the importance of traditional marriage between a man and a woman, as well as the vital role of fathers in families, sexual purity. He speaks out against sexual immorality, including premarital sex, adultery, and pornography. Social justice. Bishop Wooden actively engages in discussions about racial reconciliations, 
economic disparities and community development. Religious freedom. He defines the right to express religious beliefs without compromise, even when unpopular. Gender identity and sexuality. Bishop Wooden adheres to biblical teachings on gender role and sexuality, which may differ from popular culture. Remember that his stance is uh, formally rooted in his faith and commitment to biblical truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. often involves other leaders and elders in conflict resolution within the church community. Their wisdom, experience, and spiritual discernment contribute to finding solutions that align with biblical principle and promote unity among congregants. Bishop Patrick Wadden Sr. thoughtfully selects leaders and elders for conflict and resolution on their spirituality, maturity, wisdom, and commitment to biblical principles. He considers their track record of handling disputes, their ability to listen empathetically and their dedication to fostering unity within the church community. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. assesses a spiritual maturity based on the several key factors. Fruit of Spirit. He looks for evidence of the fruit of the spirit described in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 which includes a love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control, consistency in character. He absorbs consistency in character, integrity and behavior over time, depth of relationship with God. He considers the individual's prayer life, devotion to scripture, and personal relationship with God. Servant heart, he values a willingness to serve others selflessly. Teaching ability, he appreciates a humble and a teachable attitude. Discernment, he assesses an individual's ability to discern spiritual matters Remember that these criteria may vary slightly depending on the context and specific situation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe our channel and we will give you more information in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. God bless you.